In the last lecture, we talked about objects, and objects have attributes. Attributes are pairs, a name paired with a value, and the name is how you look up an attribute on an object. So what an object really is, is it's a collection of name-value pairs. Those are its attributes, like its properties or its features, things about the object that describe its current state, and those can change over time. So let's just take a quick look at some of the more confusing parts of how attributes work in Python, just so you have a second chance to go over the details. So attributes are name-value pairs. All objects have attributes. Oh, there, name-value pairs. And classes, by the way, are objects too. They're just a special type of object because they can be the class of another object. So classes have attributes. An instance attribute is what's called an attribute of an instance. Now what's an instance? An instance is anything that was created by calling a class. So we say that something is an instance of a class if we created it by calling that class. And every object has a class. It's an instance of some class. Okay, so an instance attribute is an attribute that's on the instance itself. Something that's particular to this one thing. Whereas a class attribute is actually an attribute of the class of the instance, so it's still a descriptive property of that thing, but it's something that's shared among all instances of the class. So that's the description of what an instance attribute and a class attribute are. There's also some terminology around functions and methods. What's going on there? Well, if you take all the set of all things that are class attributes, and the set of all things that are function valued, so they are functions, methods are their intersection. So a method is a class attribute, meaning a name value pair on the class of an instance, where that value is a function, because functions are a type of value. Okay, so within the Python object system, functions are objects, because they're just regular values. Bound methods are slightly different. So bound method is also an object. It acts like a function, but what it is is a function where the first parameter self has already been bound to an instance. So the first argument's already passed in. And then when we call a bound method, we only have to pass in the rest of the arguments, not just the first one. Okay, and then a dot expression is there in order to give us those bound methods. So a dot expression evaluates to a bound method. When you take an instance, you look up one of its class attributes, and that class attribute is a function. So the way this works is that you write an expression that evaluates to some instance, and then put dot, and then a name of a method, which is a class attribute, its value is a function. And when you evaluate this thing, you get back a bound method. So let's go through all the details of how to look up a name on an object using a dot expression. So to evaluate a dot expression, we first evaluate the expression on the left of the dot. That gives us the object of the dot expression. Next, we check and see if this name matches one of the instance attributes of that object. So every object has some instance attributes. Either it has one with this name or it doesn't. If it does, then that's the value of the dot expression. If it's not found, then name is looked up in the class. So that's how all instances of a class have something in common, is they all share the same class, and this procedure of evaluating a dot expression looks in the class if it doesn't find a name in the instance. Okay, so then that class attribute value is returned unless it is a function, in which case we have this special behavior where a bound method is returned instead. Meaning, you get the function back, but its first parameter is already bound to the object that was the object of the dot expression. So remember, every time we have a method, we call the first argument self. That's always the first formal parameter. And that one will have been used up already when we get this function back by evaluating the dot expression. Now there's one part that we haven't really discussed yet what it means to look something up in a class. That actually has its own set of rules, and we'll get to those later in the lecture.